when you are uh, testing for the mean, there is a very simple formula between the, the significance level alpha and this value c. So, this value c has a name, uh, sometimes uh, this c is called as the critical value. You will see this terminology being used uh, uh, quite often and this is sort of the way in which you uh, determine the critical value. And I have put down here uh, sort of a, for this particular uh, you know variance 4 squared and uh, 10 samples, you, you can evaluate the C for different values of alpha, alpha 0 0.5, 0 0.1, I uh, you know 0.5 sounds like a ridiculously high significance level, but anyway. So, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, uh, very reasonable uh, sort of uh, type 1 error probabilities. And when you want to do a Z, a Z test at, at a particular significance level alpha, you go and pick the corresponding C, which is the critical value as uh, called by, uh, I mean called in some cases. So, if, if, if your threshold goes uh, in the right side at test, if it goes above the critical value, you end up rejecting the uh, null, okay. So, this is, uh, this is how you would do it with significance level, okay. Now, there is, uh, there is another uh, uh, important idea called the p-value. Okay, so this p-value is uh, uh, is again um, actually like a statistic. I mean, so you remember that uh, statistic t is derived from the samples. Uh, likewise, the p-value is also something that's derived from the samples. It is actually a probability that is derived from the samples. Uh, what is it? The probability of is a bit of a uh, interesting thing. So I'll, I'll define it, and then you will see uh, whether you like the definition or not. So the basic idea is. Uh, supposing you decide a significance level, that tells you the critical value and you have, you have a test, right? So, uh, if t is greater than c, I am going to reject null, that is the test I am running, no problem. Now, you will get different values of t, right? As you get different values of t in your samples, I mean you, you get one set of samples, uh, the value of t is 0.23, what do you do? You compare with the critical value and reject or accept. So, I have made here a table for these different types of values. So, in one case I got 0.23, another case I got 2.96, another case I got 6.20 and depending on the significance level I pick, depending on the critical value that I get, I may accept, I may reject the null hypothesis. So, this is what happens out there. So, 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 so you should be aware of these things when, when, you, when you make a decision, it is always fraught with error. I mean, you are hoping uh, something would happen and then you make a decision and there is an error you can't be so sure in some cases you accept, in some, some cases you reject, right? So, that you are just trading off and you are hoping 0 0.005 for instance, it's a low enough probability of type 1 error that you are okay, okay? But nevertheless, as you vary alpha for a particular value of capital T, you may reject sometimes, you may accept sometimes. So, that is something important to know. So, 2.96 for instance, at a significance level of 0 0.01, you are rejecting the null hypothesis. At a significance level of 0 0.005, you are accepting the null hypothesis, okay? So, at different uh, significant levels, uh, you end up uh, rejecting or uh, accepting uh, for this particular value of t, okay? So, so, so same thing with, uh, you know, 0 0.23, but I guess 6.20 is, is really so high uh, value of t that you, you mostly reject uh, null at all significance levels. You have to go really, really low in the significance level uh, for you to uh, reject uh, the uh, null hypothesis, okay? So, th think about why this is true. Maybe I should draw a picture here for you, okay? So, let us say this is your, uh, this is your uh, uh, null hypothesis, right? So, mu uh, for, uh, so, 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 this h0 is true, then your mean is mu, right? And then your, so distribution let us say is normal, so, so your distribution would look like this, okay. So, this is the uh, distribution of T, okay. So, you may get like a, you know, for different values of alpha, you will get uh, different values of C, right. So, so, supposing C is here for a particular value of alpha. Uh, so, if T falls here, you reject null. Uh, in this side, you accept null, okay? So, in some samplings, you may go above C, in some samplings, you may go below C and uh, what is your uh, alpha? Alpha is this area, right? So, this is your alpha, okay? So, as you keep reducing alpha, you go further and further to the right 
and you will, uh, you know, you will reject only if your t goes really, really large. So if your t, the value of t that you get, the sample mean that you get in this case, uh, as it keeps increasing in value, you are not going to really reject unless your alpha becomes really, really small. So this picture is a good picture to keep in mind if you are thinking of, uh, you know, a right sided test uh, with sample mean having a certain distribution and this is how uh, it would look, okay. So there are so many things that are interestingly captured here. We can, uh, you can imagine how that would work. Uh, there is the critical value C, there is the alpha that comes in, there is the mean for the H0 distribution and all of those guys uh, get wonderfully captured. So the distribution of T also if you remember, it is the sample mean, right? So it is going to be normal with mean being mu and the variance would be sigma squared by n, okay? So as you increase n what happens, you know, notice as you increase n what would happen? The, the variance decreases, so you, you, your picture changes, you know, your, your alpha naturally becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Because your variance is decreasing. If you keep the same C, just by increasing n, you can improve on your type 1 error probability. So all of these things you can do, so it is a very nice uh, little picture to keep in your mind if you are thinking for uh, about Z test, okay, right side Z test. If it is left side, it will be the other picture. If it is two sided, it will be a slightly different picture, but always keep this picture in mind for a right sided Z test. Uh, C and this alpha and where that uh, T has to lie uh, for you to reject or accept the null hypothesis. Now, what is the p-value, okay? So, so let me first uh, define it and then I will draw another picture to show you what the p-value is, okay? Supposing you got actually a value for capital T in one of your samplings, okay? The lowest significance level at which you will reject null for T equals T is the p-value. Okay. So, what, what is going on here? So, let us draw the same picture again. So, you have a, a null hypothesis mu. Okay. So, this is H0. So, your distribution for T is going to be centered around mu. So, you will get something like this, right? So, this will be your distribution for T. So, this is a PDF of T, let us say, which again is normal, whatever. And you got a value of C. Okay. So, let us say you fixed an alpha. So, this would be alpha this area is alpha, right? So, you fixed an alpha and you got a C, okay? So, you know what the distribution of T is. Uh, it's normal. Let me write it down so that uh, sigma squared by N, you know the value of sigma squared, you know the value of N, you know the value of mu. So, from there you can find out C so that this is true. So, we know how to do this, right? So, now you may actually get, let me say, let me say, let me change my color here. I will change it to blue. I say I got a value T. So, I got a value T. Okay. So, at this value of, uh, uh, since I got a value t and this t is actually greater than c, I am going to be ending up rejecting the null hypothesis, right? So, for this particular value of alpha, if t goes to the right, I will uh, reject, okay? So, now I'm, I may choose a lesser alpha, right? Instead of choosing this alpha, maybe I choose an alpha prime, okay? So, let us say, uh, let us say maybe I will draw a different color here multiple colors we will have. Let us pick this color. So, let us say I get a C prime and uh, this area let us say is alpha prime, okay? So, even for this alpha prime, I keep rejecting uh, the hypothesis, right? So, for alpha prime also because T is greater than C, right? Uh, T is greater than C, T is greater than C prime. So, this may be a red and black. So, you see T is uh, greater than C, which implies reject H0 at uh, alpha. Uh, T is greater than C prime as well. So, you will be rejecting H0 at alpha prime, which is actually lesser than alpha, right? So, as you keep shifting your critical value to the right, you, you see that you keep, you still reject, but when the critical value becomes equal to T, what happens? When the critical value becomes equal to T, when this itself becomes the critical value, okay, equal to the critical value, then you will get a certain area here, right? So, this guy is the p-value, okay? So, so if uh, critical value is equal to T, implies uh, you are sort of still uh, rejecting uh, null, but it is the lowest 
significance level at which uh, we reject h0 right so that is the trick to this understanding this p value so you, so you, so you so let's say you start with an alpha you got a c then you got an actual test t and then as you keep changing this uh, critical value you are re reducing the alpha there will come a point where you will exactly reject t so after that if it crosses then you will accept uh, null okay so that value is the p value so so quite often what people will do is people will forget about significance level okay there is no significance level. See, once you start thinking of p value, there is really no significance level, right. So, whatever the significance level may be, I will simply report my test statistic is t and my p value is so much probability, some 0 0.002, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.12, whatever, whatever I p value I get, I will simply report only the p value, okay. So, a lot of tests are designed in this fashion people will not commit to a significance level ahead of time. You could either commit to a significance level, find the critical value, do your test, fine. So instead of doing that, you say, I will report a p-value. I will report this, this strange probability, which is a function of the samples, right? So once I get a, cap, a small t, I can compute this, uh, you know, area to the right of t, right? In the right side of test, that is the uh, p-value, okay? So you get a p-value. Uh, for uh, your z test, okay. So in that case, you don't pick a significance level at all, okay. So how do you find uh, p value for t equals t? Simply put c equal to t in the computation of alpha. You remember the computation of alpha, right? This probability alpha equals one minus f c of root ten c by four. In the in the z test, right sided z test, this is the formula we got. In other z tests, you may get other formula. Whatever formula you get for alpha in terms of the critical uh, value, simply put critical value equal to t, equal to whatever value you got. You do that, you will get the p-value. So quite often in some tests, people will report p-value and not say anything about, uh, you know, uh, critical value or uh, significance level or something. If you cannot commit to a significance level ahead of time, if you cannot fix your type 1 error probability ahead of time, you simply look at the sample mean and simply report the p-value. So if I were to get, you know, 6.2 as the uh, observed sample mean in one particular sampling, I will simply say the p-value is 4.755 into 10 power minus 7. So that looks so low. If the p-value is very low, then you think that you reject none. Okay, so how do you, how do you use the p-value? If p-value is low enough, we reject H0. What is low enough? I mean, you can define whatever it is to be. Okay, it's sort of like significance level at some time, you know, go back to significance level. But anyway, it's all these guys are very related ideas. They're not very drastically different ideas. Uh, but this is uh, some philosophy that people adopt. Okay, so let me just summarize this notion of, of in the context of the uh, Z test uh, and uh, how we are going about it. But, but this is used generally for any other hypothesis test also. In uh, any any hypothesis testing scenario, not just in the context of z te z test with right sided or left sided or any one sided, you you can either choose to fix a significance level ahead like of time and go through the critical value approach. You fix the significance level, find the critical value, run your test, or you can say I don't want to do that. I will simply report the p value. Okay. So so even for that, you have to sort of assume there is a significance level. You need a formula for significance level in terms of the critical value. And except instead of finding the critical value, you take the value that you got, substitute the critical value as that, find the significance level, report it as a p-value, okay. So these are things you can do. Uh, both of these have uh, uses. Uh, in some applications, people will report p-value. In some applications, people will find, fix the significance level, find a critical value, and then decide the rejection region, okay. So both are uh, interesting possibilities. Uh, there are sort of two philosophies you can say of testing in some applications it's done. How do you use the p-value? Uh, if p-value is low enough, you reject uh, uh, null. So, so very low p-value sort of indicates that the sampling you saw is very unlikely to have come from the uh, actual null hypothesis, right? You're, you're way off from the mean, okay? So this sort of summarizes one particular test. I discussed this in so much more detail. Uh, after this, we'll see many more tests, you know, different types of situations where, you know, you might have to do a Z test for the left side, Z test on both sides, you know, different types of scenarios where our test itself will change. But the fundamental philosophy of hypothesis testing will remain the same, okay. There is a null hypothesis, there is an alternative hypothesis, there is a test statistic. 
which is a function of the samples. You compute that and decide the rejection region based on the test statistic. Once you do that, you find the significance level or type 1 error probability alpha as you know, depending on the distribution of the test statistic. So now, the distribution of the test statistic will change from problem to problem. Okay? In the Z test, it became normal with mean mu and variance sigma square by n. In, the, in some other test, it may be something else. But once you know the distribution, once you know the rejection region, it is easy to find the probability of type 1 error. Probability that you reject null given that the null is true. Okay? That is that's something you can find. Okay? You can also find the power, which is our probability of type 2 error. Okay, once you know an alternative hypothesis, okay, then you can find probability that you will accept null given that the uh, opposite is true, the alternative is true, that is your beta which is the type 2 error. These two calculations are extremely important in hypothesis testing. Okay, so, we will see numerous examples to illustrate this in the ensuing lectures. Thank you very much.